All right, chip of the day is going to be about small signal Darlingtons. Okay, these are little TO92 Darlingtons. And my question is, are they obsolete? Um, or should we still be using them? So, so that's kind of a question. And I'm going to be kind of looking at, I guess let's first talk about Darlingtons because some people might not be aware of them, especially if you come from Arduino land. You probably haven't seen these before. A Darlington is just a transistor and a transistor hooked back to back. So when the first transistor starts conducting current, it conducts that current into the second transistor. So if this transistor has a beta of one, that's the gain of one, I mean, a gain of, let's say it has a gain of 100, I'm sorry. So it has a gain of 100, and this has a gain of 100, then you'll have a gain of 100 times 100. Um, and so these gains can add up quite quickly and you can get very high gain in the entire, in the entire thing. So let's see what they, um, let's see what they spec for these things. Uh, so I've got some 14s and, and they're guaranteed for a 10,000 beta. So, uh, so for one milliamp in, you get 10,000 milliamps out. Well, that, that's ridiculous. It'd be like one microamp in, you get 10 milliamps out. Um, and so that's basically the way that they're used. Um, Let's see here. Yeah, they're testing them at 10, 10 milliamps of, uh, of current here. And so they are very nice. So you can use just a little bit of signal to turn something on quite a bit. And so how rugged are these things? Well, let's see. Uh, they are 30 volt parts, which is fine for most garage things. Um, let's see here. How much current can they pass? Uh, how much current can they pass? Collect a current continuous, 500 milliamps. 500 milliamps, that's pretty decent for one of these little guys. Now they're gonna be limited by their case temperature and stuff, but yeah, 500 milliamps, that's pretty healthy. Now, why do I think these might be obsolete? Um, in a lot of circuits these days, uh, you'll see these parts used in the same application. Uh, these are 2N7000 FETs, and they are little small signal devices, and they have very low input currents and high output currents, and uh, they can, let's see, what are their specs? Uh, they can do, let's see here, continuous drain current for a 7000 is 200 milliamps. Well, that's interesting. 200 milliamps for this one, but 500 milliamps for that one. Hmm, okay. Um, let's see, these are 60 volts, so these are better for voltages. Um, yeah, I don't know. Let's, uh, let's, let's hook one up and just to, uh, just to show you kind of what's going on here. Uh, let's see here, let me put, uh, oh, I don't know, let's, Set my power supply to nine volts just for fun. Then we have a battery. Okay, I'm gonna put, put it on here and, and we have an LED that turns on. Now, um, this is a Darlington, okay? I have a thousand ohm resistor in a, and a uh, uh, LED, okay? We can measure the voltage across the um, Let's see, let's measure the voltage across a thousand ohm resistor. And we have six and a half, so we have six and a half milliamps flowing uh, in, the, uh, in the part, in the LED. And what else do we know? How much base current do we need? Okay, this is a 100K resistor. Uh, so we have a 100K resistor and nine, nine, nine volts, okay? Where's our calculator? Uh, nine volts, 100K. We have 90 microamps. 90 microamps to turn on an LED at, at probably any current that we want, right? Um, and so, can this just be replaced these days? So let's rip out the... Uh, Rip out the Darlington and we'll shove in the 2N7000. See here. And look at that. <laughs> it works. <laughs> pull out the, pull out the, uh-oh. I pull out the, 
I pull out the uh, current and it keeps going. Well, uh, FETs are voltage parts. So now I need to turn it off. There we go. So I put the, uh, it's, it's leaking a little bit. I, I don't know if you could check, check that out, but I'll put my 100K to ground now. So now I have, uh, have it turned off. I'll put my 100K to, uh, this is a real wimpy 100K. It's got thin leads on it. There we go. I'll put my 100K here to uh, plus, plus nine and it turns on. So they are basically equivalent for almost all purposes. Um, the only thing that would be different is if you're driving them with logic, you could probably just drive the uh, 2N7000 directly. You wouldn't need the resistor. Um, some people say it's good practice to put in the resistor. And so maybe in most cases, it's the same part count. It's the same mm, lot of things. Maybe this one's a little bit better with voltage, but this one's better with current. Um, but if you were building a product, uh, an engineer doesn't just stop at picking parts. He's got to look at the, at the bomb. Bomb is the bill of materials. How much does things cost? So the 2N7000 on DigiKey is 37 cents, okay? And the NPSA14, which is my Darlington, is 12 cents. Well, that's three times. You, it's three times more money to use one of those FETs. So yeah, I think there's still a place for these Darlingtons. So let me know what you think, um, whether, whether Darlingtons are still here to stay. Um, we can test one here on a, uh, on a tester just to see what it says. It tests as, a, as a NPN, but look at the uh, HFE. It says 153K. Now, I don't know if I really quite believe that, but um, the test conditions, I think, in these little devices may be a bit strange for this, but yeah, 150, 153K for 5.5 milliamps. Emitter, emitter current of 5.5 milliamps. Uh, the VBE is 1.9, oops. What else does it tell us? HFE, yeah, that's about it. All right, let's put in the uh, 2N7000 just for fun. Yeah, it's an Animos. 1.82 turn on voltage, uh, 55 picofarads, interesting. I didn't know it would calculate that. On resistance of 1.3 ohms, very nice. That's another thing that these things will be a better at. They'll be a little bit more conductive than the other ones. Uh, so 1.3 ohms compared to the voltage drop that this guy would have. So this guy's gonna have a voltage drop. That is the collector to emitter voltage. And let's see if I can find that. Uh, collector. Let's see here, collector, emitter, breakdown voltage, no, collector, DC current gain, collector, emitter, saturation is 1.5 volts. So the, yeah, so the Darlingtons are going to drop quite a bit of voltage. Um, so if that's something you worry about, then yep, uh, the Darlingtons lose and the uh, FETs win, as usually is the case for turning on something if you need a, a very low, very low ohms. Um, but a lot of times you don't, right? Like turning on the LE, you, yeah, maybe you don't if you have enough headroom. Um, what else? You, then you think, oh, well, the FETs are going to be super fast, okay? So let's see here what the FETs say about speed. Uh, let's see. They don't really, they don't, FETs, they don't really say megahertz. They'll tell you the turn on time, okay? They say the turn on time is uh, 10 nanoseconds for the 2N7000. And um, megahertz is cycles per second, right? Um, so a cycle is an on and an off. So let's double this. Let's say it's 200 nanoseconds. Okay. I mean, uh, 20 nanoseconds. So let's say we have 20 nanoseconds. That's five, that's 50, uh, 50 megahertz. You say, hey, that's plenty fast, 50 megahertz. And then let's take a look at our 
our little uh, Darlington. Let's see what he says. 125 megahertz, twice as fast. Almost three times as fast. So yeah, so go figure. Um, yeah, I think uh, I think these little these little guys probably get a bad rap these days. I think they're still good for a lot of things. So yeah, let me know what you think.